Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, approval of minutes of the regular meeting of June 8, 2022. Do we have a motion to approve? I move to approve. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? None. Okay. Recognition of Officer Walter Burke for being chosen as Officer of the Quarter for the period of July 15, 2022 to October 14, 2022. Officer Burke's selection for this prestigious award was based on his excellent personality, attitude, fitness, and appearance, initiative, and job proficiency. Um, Captain Wyatt? Yes. I know Officer Burke couldn't make it tonight, so it was a real brief recognition for him. On uh, June 5th, 2022, all the lieutenants and sergeants of the Patrol Division met and prepared for preparation. Unanimously selected Officer Walter Burke as Officer of the Quarter for the period of July 15th, 2022 to October 14th, 2022. Officer Burke has displayed exemplary traits for the prestigious recognition. Among the many traits they identified were his outstanding personality and positive attitude. Business and appearance, high level of initiative, job knowledge, and proficiency. The has earned the confidence and trust of the supervisors. His hard work and dedication reflect great credit upon himself, the Fairfield Police Agency, and the police profession as a whole. As a result, he is most deserving of his officer quarter award, and we will arrange to present to him tomorrow morning when he's on duty as officer of the quarter pin, his officer of the quarter flag. And his nameplate is going to be memorialized on the festival. All right. Congratulations, Officer Burke. Okay. Presentation of the Chief's Recognition Medal to Officer Daniel Chase and Officer Nicholas Artizone for demonstrating consistent level of noteworthy performance and garnering a minimum of five supervisor recognition reports within the past year. Officer Chase and Officer Artizone's dedication and loyalty to the law enforcement profession. Sincerity of purpose and above average effort make these two officers most deserving of this honor. Chief? Um, so the Chief's Recognition Medal is awarded to officers in recognition of and appreciation for such traits as dedication and loyalty to the police profession, high quality performance, above average effort, demonstrations of leadership, and overall no noteworthy acts of service. Officer Nicholas Artizone has consistently embodied these traits in his performance of duty, has received five commendations from his supervisors in the fiscal year 2021 and 2022, and therefore has earned this distinguished recognition. It is with great pleasure that we present Officer Nicholas Artizone with the Chief's Recognition Medal. Officer Artizone, we thank you for your contribution to the Fairfield Police Department and our mission to serve and protect the town of Fairfield. Nick is here with his family as well, so. <laughs> if I could all also just recognize Officer Dan Chase, who uh, has all the same traits and has also received more than five um, write-ups from his supervisors in the last year and as a result has also received the um, Chief's Recognition Medal. Um, he's not here to uh, accept his award though. We'll get it to him during the show. Okay, recognition of Officer Daniel Lawrence has completed his probationary period and recommend that he be approved as an active and good standing member of the Fairfield Police Department. We need a motion for that? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Abstentions? Congratulations, Officer Loris. There he is. Is he here? Okay. Well, wherever he is. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Uh, recognition that Officer Dimitar Tadi has completed his probationary period and recommend that he be approved as an acting good standing member of the Fairfield Police Department. Do you have a motion? I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Extensions done. Okay. He's not here either, I take it? Okay. <laughs> well, he's, congratulations, where are you? We just, we just like to oh, make, give the uh, commissioner an awareness that they completed their probationary oh. period and now they're official members. Oh, we don't have to Thank motion you. It doesn't matter. It's good that it's okay. on the record. It's on the record. <laughs> yeah, it's on the record. 
Okay, we're into the traffic surveys. All right. Commissioner Ambrose. A survey number one, location, Villa Avenue at Lewis Drive. Nature of request. This is tabled from the May 11, 22 meeting. Install two stop signs on Villa Avenue at Lewis Drive. Eastbound stop sign in front of Teddy Bear Corner at 273 Villa Avenue in West. By whom? Amy Baird and Richard Dix. Recommendation. Villa Avenue at Lewis Drive. Install MU, uh, mute CD approved horizontal alignment signs, uh, uh, W1-10E, but with offset lines on Villa Avenue, <coughs> west of Nichols and Villa Avenue, east of Lewis Drive, to warn traffic of upcoming intersections. Investigate stop sign request by performing engineering study, speeds, volumes, site distance, and crash data. Stop signs must meet Mute CD warrants. Installing stop signs may cause increase in rear end accidents, but could reduce other types. Hence, recommend study. Anybody from the, we have somebody from the police department just bail us that a little bit. We have somebody from the. Yeah, I mean, we looked at the um, prior to going on the survey trip, uh, we looked at the Area With all due respect, can you, can you stand up over again here? <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. So I know he's not here tonight, but engineer, town engineer Bill Hurley did not think that without a study, um, just approving the stop signs would be uh, recommended at this time. Um, we looked at the data that in that intersection. There's not a lot of uh, I think we found one accident at that location in, the, in uh, from 2000 from January of 21 to January of 22, but it was not because of the stop sign, it was because of a, it was a one car accident because of speed. So there wasn't a lot of data to su support um, putting a stop sign there, and I believe Bill Hurley thought that that would actually um, increase traffic, back traffic up uh, eastbound of Hill Avenue all the way into Bridgeport, and also have the same effect westbound into Fairfield. So, okay. Bill really recommended that we study the we, we stop signs an engineering study to further uh, evaluate the intersection. Okay. Thank you. Anybody from the commission have anything you want to add? No. no. I, yeah. don't know, and I totally agree with that. I don't know what the answer is. You know, you fix one thing and you create another. So, I'd be interested yeah. in terms of what you're saying. Yeah, we did agree. We did a line of sight um, evaluation out there. We. Um, you know, from Lewis coming on to Villa, it, it is a tough section because you have the hill coming in, yep. trying to come out. It is a tough left-hand turn to make, and I think that's what he recommends by those um, horizontal alignment signs. Right. So he thinks that would be a you know a temporary solution for now until a further study could be done. Okay. And I thought Nick was it Nick, Nick Nichols. I thought it, that was hard coming out of it is. Street. Okay. Thank you. I, I agree with the. The stop sign is back in track now because if you go to you know, Fairfield Woods Road, if you're familiar with that road, uh, at Morehouse Highway or Morehouse right. Lane, there's the stop sign there on both sides. And during the commuter time, the traffic backs up for like miles. So, I mean, that, that's the point you make that if you put stop signs at that intersection, you're going to have traffic backed up. And whoever lives on Villa Avenue, you're going to get polluted with cars idling. But that's just my opinion. Uh, anything else? Huh? Okay, for the public, come on up. You just identify yourself, your name, and your address. Thank you. And I also have a little hand up. Okay. I have to apologize for those people who just came in. Our air conditioning is being replaced in July and the project. <laughs> We're doing the best we can with schools we have, so I apologize. Uh, Amy Barrett, 306 Mill Avenue. Okay. And I miscounted the number of okay, so. commissioners here. <laughs> Thank you. So hopefully I remember everything Thank that you. I wrote on here. Yeah. Oh, look at that. I do have one. This is not for you, but I need to That's fine. Okay. Um, first, thank you, everyone, for your service, and congratulations to the newest members of PD. I know it's not an easy job. Um, 
We originally presented this back in May, mm -hmm. and it was the Commission's recommendation to table this request pending the outcome of the Black Cat data, uh, which you know has been reviewed. Uh, since that time, however, uh, there have been uh, several accidents. There is a picture of one here on this front page. This happened on May 17th, just five or six days after the last meeting. It was a single car accident. You know, again, it, it's due to speed. He crossed the double yellow line uh, on Villa Avenue into oncoming traffic and took out three brick posts and four sections of fence. He hit it with enough force to cause the bricks to land in the back seat of his car. So he's obviously traveling at a, a high rate of speed. Um, you know, there have been additional incidents, right? You know, I live right on that intersection. I hear them all the time. You know, they're happening at all hours of the day. People are hitting the curbs. Uh, they're blowing out tires. You know, and this is all, again, you know, due to speed and not navigating the curb correctly. Uh, I spoke to Officer Jenkins uh, this week, who looked up some additional crash data for me. And uh, because, as you know, there is a stop sign right at the end of Villa and Melville. Uh, so not that, that far away. Uh, since 2018, there have only been seven rear-end accidents there, which is only about one and a half per year. Uh, so even if it did increase those accidents, it certainly, we believe, would reduce the number of single-car accidents. And you know, these accidents are causing far more damage because they're leaving the road, causing significant property damage. You know, I was a victim of that crash on February 5th, I believe it was, where the gentleman um, lost control of his car at a high rate of speed and ended up in my front yard, and he did $10,000 worth of damage to my property. You know, um, at the time it was thought maybe he was an anomaly, but clearly, you know, May 17th, there's another speeding car. Um, he couldn't be here today, but uh, one of our neighbors on Lewis Drive, who is a retired Fairfield firefighter, witnessed a young driver hit the curb, blow out his tire, and lose control of his car while he was walking his dog with his daughter. And, you know, he stated to us that, you know, he is fearful of his safety. Um, if we look at the next page, you know, regarding the fine recommendation, there is currently, uh, and I'm going to assume it's that MUTCD uh, approved sign that indicates there's a curve and it says slow curve. Uh, it's not materially different than what's being proposed. And uh, Ms. Pakowski, who could also not be here today, she's on vacation. Uh, she did kind of a survey monkey type uh, questionnaire on moms of Fairfield, which you would like to think that they're all kind of mature, experienced drivers on moms of Fairfield. Maybe not the best drivers, but certainly with experience. Um, and you can see out of approximately 700 people who commented, 651 of those people responding have no idea what that sign is telling them. Uh, you know, I have a sample of a W1 10E sign which is proposed. That might not be the exact one. That was a sample that I was able to get um, from a, a MUTCD sign uh, site. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we feel that putting that additional sign up, it, it's not materially different than what we have now, which is is not effective. Uh, the next page is just a quick aerial uh, site of where we were proposing the stop signs. Um, Commissioner Lebo, as you mentioned, pulling out of Nichols is very dangerous. I, even though I live on Villa, I pull out of Nichols on a routine basis because it's not safe for me to pull in and out of my driveway. So I drive around the block, I come out of Nichols so that I can back into my driveway. Uh, and even that, you know, I mean, every day people are yelling at me, speeding around me, giving me the finger just because I'm trying to pull into my own uh, driveway. You know, and at the end of the school year, the bus stop for my daughter who just uh, graduated Tomlinson was in front of our house. I actually had it switched from across the street because so many people were not stopping for the school bus. You know, when it was originally on the eastbound side at 303, she almost got hit by a FedEx. On my side of the street, people are coming around that corner so fast that three out of five days, someone is driving around the bus. And unfortunately, the bus cameras point in towards the students. They don't point out towards the cars. You know, and the poor bus driver is you know, all, all he can do is honk his horn and, unfortunately, in front of the kids, give the driver the finger, which apparently that's what he did, according to my daughter. Um, but, you know, that, that's his only recourse. Um, you know, and if there was a stop sign at these locations, it would at least slow people down, right? I mean, it takes two, two to two and a half seconds for someone to apply the brakes, right? And with the distance from that curve where you can see the line of sight, the stop sign at Melville, 
That's at 25 miles an hour, that's a few seconds, but nobody's going 25 miles an hour. I think the traffic study data supports that statement. Um, so uh, in, in closing, I just want to say that you know, we're proposing these signs and the crosswalks because we feel it provides a need of safety for all the children that are going to the bus stops. There are children that cross Melville at Lewis to get the bus stops to, uh, in, in the morning and in the evening. There are multiple children walking to Ward they have to cross. Um, you know, there's lots of long fa young families with children that walk to the nicely uh, renovated park on Tunxus Hill, you know, which is great to see lots of families there playing, utilizing this new space, but it's not safe for them to walk there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we also have an increase in dog walkers and residents exercising in the area. You know, more often than not, you know, we see people, and, and I happen to be one of those dog walkers, I have to cross the street there because there's no sidewalk further down on my side of the street. So if I want to go west, I have to cross the street to the eastbound side to get to Brooklyn Avenue. There's no sidewalk on my side of the street, uh, you know, and <clears throat> which becomes an issue. You know, and it's, we feel it would also provide additional safety to the employees as well as the customers of Teddy Bear Corner Daycare. That that's the only way that they can pull into the daycare. You know, if you approach Teddy Bear Daycare from the, the other way, like headed towards Ville, I guess that's north, when you pull into the parking lot, the parking lot spaces are angled such that, that you can't do it. So you have to pull in from Villa if you're going to park properly there. Um, and again, you know, it would also provide drivers an appropriate time to react to the school buses that are stopped along that section of the road uh, when school is is back in session. And I guess, I guess the last thing I would say is you know, we submitted 54 signatures and that was just a very brief section of that neighborhood. That didn't even include anyone on Nichols Avenue. So I, I think it's clear that there is an abundance of, of desire for this solution from, from the neighborhood. Okay, well, thank you. Question? Yes, Mr. Stone. <coughs> I was with Captain Cole when we did the traffic study, mm -hmm. and we were amazed at the amount of traffic that was coming across the road at 8 30, quarter nine in the morning. There was no way anybody was going to get. An accident speed. So my question really is: Is it all day long that you worry about speed, or is it just when the kids are going to and from school? Because again, the school will be traffic. It really is all hours of the day. You know, some of these incidents where I've been awakened in the, at night because I can hear the cars hitting the curb, <clears throat> or 10 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, and actually one thing I forgot to address, Commissioner Pine, is <clears throat> we already experienced backed up traffic from the stop signs. You know, if there is traffic on 95, like when it's closed for an accident, no matter the time of day, from the light at Brooklawn on a Friday afternoon, it can be backed up in front of my house, and from Melville, you know, in the morning, it's backed up. Like, that's just kind of, you know, we, we've gotten used to that, right? It's just it's a fact of where we we live. But... You know, even when traffic is not at an excessive rate of speed, a lot of it comes down to that line of sight, like Commissioner Lebo was saying. When you try to pull out of Nichols, like, there is just not enough time. If you stop at that white line, you can't see past that corner. So you start to come out, there's a car. So when I pull out, it's like stop, 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 because I don't have time to pull out as people are flying around the corner. <clears throat> well... Your neighborhood is not unique because a lot of neighborhoods in Fairfield have this issue. Uh, if you go in Greenfield Hill, which is the other side of town, uh, and the commuter is coming back from Stanford and Norwalk, uh, I've, I've been going to the Patterson Club at night, and the line of traffic, you would not believe, in Bronson Road. I mean, it just says bumper to bumper. Yeah. And those roads are worse than yours. Yeah. There's no light, and they're narrow. Yeah. So your, your uh, neighborhood is not unique. Um, the recommendation for the police department is, no stop signs because they felt that traffic would back up. Um, and I know Fairfield Woods, you've been on that road, you know, during commute time, that intersection by Morehouse, traffic had backed up for a mile. So you can't move. So 
Well, I, I thought it was <clears throat> because they wanted a study for the. Well, I'm just saying. I'm saying there's other areas in town that have stop signs that, you know, back up traffic. So, um, I understand what you're saying. I sympathize. As far as the school bus goes, um, anybody passing the school bus, that's a, what's the fine? Like 500 bucks or something. Yes, but that's very difficult to enforce. You have to have two people because I it happens so often with my daughter that I've tried, and unless the bus driver can corroborate and we have a license plate, there's, there's literally the police's hands are, are tied. And I guess I just I do have one final question for the committee. When we were here to observe um, a traffic study request for a stop sign in April, okay. the stop sign was approved for the corner of Pratt and Howard, okay. a three-way stop. I, everyone agreed that it was a blind intersection, just like Nichols and Villa. One of the arguments from the person presenting it, Mr. Webster, I believe his name was, is that there are lots of bus stops there. We have a bad line of sight. Everyone agrees on it. We have lots of bus stops. We have lots of pedestrian traffic. That stop sign went through without issue. And we have a real issue here where cars are leaving the street and causing significant property damage. And it's only a matter of time before that becomes... A pedestrian and you know I understand traffic backing up but traffic backs up from Melville and in five years there were only seven rear-end accidents which like I said is less than one and a half per year the uh, stop sign if you come out of Nichols Avenue because I was down there and uh, if you stop where that stop sign is you still can't see Nichols and if you accelerate through the stop sign it's still gonna be a blind curve that stop sign is not going to alleviate the issue from that Nichols Okay, because the, that stop sign would be far enough away around the blind curve that... But they wouldn't be going 40 miles an hour or 50 well, miles an hour, even if they people, rolled I mean, through it. There's, there's all kinds of issues. I mean, people, we've had 56 infractions this month for a stop sign violation. Um, I think the police department, but if I can, uh, chief can back me up here, looking for voluntary compliance for people, and there's a lot of people who just don't obey traffic. Um, there's a, did we have a, something else on the survey? Just to, about Pansy Road and this four-way stop sign there, and the person says the person who's complaining is saying that just they go through the stop sign. Okay, they go through the stop. Sign. They want the traffic light. There. I mean, I just want to give you some ideas. Like there's a lot of issues, and stop signs are not always the issue. But um, uh, I, we appreciate the information you're giving us. Though anyway, and uh, you know we're going to go with the recommendation I think of the police department, but. Any commissioners have anything further for Ms. Oh, Ms. Barrett? Uh, no? Oh, yes, go ahead. Where do we stand with Mr. Kelly? Is he going to go back and study it? or? Captain Coble. Where do we stand with Mr. Hurley? Are we going to go back and, is he going to go back and look at something, or what is the sign on? He wants to study it. There's like the end of their study, I guess, with his department. Okay. Um, take measurements. He's out there, like, you know, Testing the last site from where I was on Nichols, he was walked out to the road for stop sign. The test would be to see if I'd be able to see him where the stop sign would be. And he, he, I don't think he, he thought it was out of the question. He did, you know, obviously all very terrible on the site there. Mm -hmm. um, also, that tree, that tree looks to your left, there that rocks last site, you know, Bill. That, that was going to be my Oh, yeah, that, that tree. Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. Yeah. I would hate to cut down another big, big old growth tree. <laughs> So we are, he is going to look at this a little further. Because he is. He, he wasn't a hard, he wasn't a hard no. He just wanted to do a full study. Okay. Which, you know, there's so many scenarios here. It's not cut to dry. Mm. Um, the other thing is, I was going to mention that tree. I was going to number two, if the bus stop is so dangerous where it is, can we address that with the board of ed? Because I know myself, I've noticed bus, buses stopping in the wrong part of the street and I called in and they went out to check it. I mean it's that it's so dangerous you it, shouldn't have the bus stop in there. It's right in front of my house. I changed it from across the street right, for that so reason. Dangerous, right, because no one stops when they come around that corner. Right. Or sometimes from Millville they don't stop either, but there really is no other alternative. Yeah. Although next year won't be an issue because she'll be a walker to ward. Right, but I'm but, worried about all the children. I'm worried right. if this is a very dangerous situation this really needs to be addressed. Maybe we move it down further or on another street. I don't know that. I'm just thinking about yeah. it. No, I mean, the next year might be another story because I don't know who's going to be in Tomlin or McKinley next year because that's McKinley bus service too. Uh, but it, um, I, I would like to add, and I think Sarah was going to 
to justice. Uh, you know, the town, I think everyone's aware, has this complete streets policy, and I would request that the complete streets checklist uh, be used in coordination or conjunction with this engineering study to, to really figure out what the best solution is for that area. Okay, thank you. Just, so just to make a note, uh, there was selective enforcement done on Villa Avenue through the traffic unit. Um, do we have any results of that? In the monthly report, we had Villa Avenue as a uh, selective enforcement street. And from May 1st to July 13th, we made 19 more vehicles. Oh, great, thank you. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> They're there, watching you guys. All right, uh, anything else in commission? Let's make a motion. 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 I move to accept the recommendation that's before us with respect to the placement of the uh, the two stop signs. The, the no, not the no. They did install the, the MUTCD approved alignment sign. Okay. And, uh, and and uh, performing engineering study too. I further I further make a motion that the engineering study should continue with Mr. Hurley uh, looking into this issue further to see if further enforcement measures that need to be taken. Okay. Do you have a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Motion passes. And you're going to continue to. Uh, Selective enforcement, Lieutenant Irizarry, sure, sure. on Ville Avenue. So they had 19 arrests over there. They're going to keep hammering Ville Avenue for you guys. Hope that helps a little bit. Okay, next. Survey number two, location, Old Post Road up to Congress Street and back. New bike route. Nature of request. Tabled from the May 11th, 22 meeting. Nate Rex replaced Karen Seacrest. Additional map and instructions attached. To create a new bike route and connect a couple of the existing bike routes already established. It is the Bike Pedestrian Committee's belief that we need to continue to add routes throughout Fairfield to continue to promote, share the road, and to encourage cars and bikers and pedestrians to respect each other. Please see attached sheet for road routes. By whom Nate Rex, member of Bike Pedestrian Committee. Recommendation. Streets not wide enough to designate bike route with edged lines. Confirm type of bike route dash ones with decal signs and a few warning signs. Share the road, keep three feet away, etc. And pavement markers. Share uh, narrows near key intersections or curves or extension, extensive markings and signage. Recommend low key bike route 18 miles long with occasional signs and marking to alert motorists of cyclists on roadway. Captain Colville, do we have anything to add on that? I'm all here to hear Good, thanks. Uh, Commissioners um, Stone, Bill Hurley, and I drove the bike group, uh, and there was by far definitely, uh, especially in the Greenfield Hill area, the uh, we thought that the lanes were way too narrow to put a designated bike route on the sides. Uh, Bill Hurley recommended putting some markings in, indicating, uh, we probably see them around town, uh, indicating you know, what the, looks like a bicyclist on the road, um, just to you know, direct, you know, make people more aware so bikers know which way to go. And so some additional sign uh, markings, but not designated bike lanes, which I think is in... Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Commissioner, have anything? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Commissioner Stone. I am in total agreement with the idea that the rules are too narrow. There's no question about it. I mean, I can't picture a bicycle coming down the road street. But the speed of cars go up there, and there's no, no room. You've got gullies on the side of the road in some places so you can't even get off the road with it. Um, and I, my opinion is we've got to come up with a different route and use some wider streets where you can do it properly. Um, and the other part of my comment is that when the bicycle riders learn to respect the law as it's written, 
and show the proper respect to other people on the roads, I am opposed. Okay, anybody else on the commission? Yes. Yeah, I, I would just like to state that uh, I live on Burr Street and I have bicycled um, Burr and Congress Street and um, and it is difficult. There is the the road; those roads really are are not wide enough to to put bicycle lanes in it. I find many of the bicyclists quite respectful of the public and quite respectful of what they're doing. Obviously, there are some times where they ride two or three abreast, and that's not. That's not good ethical behavior. However, I think for the most part, um, they are conscientious. I, I do. My only my concern, though, I've, I've ridden at 5:30 in the morning, at 6 o'clock in the morning, and there's a lot of traffic that comes down Burr Street and Congress Street that that's heading down towards the train station or towards Westport, and it's it's dangerous at that time of the uh, of the day. Um, so it's not. It's, it really. Um, it's very difficult, I think, area up that way to, uh, to provide lanes that would be safety lanes. So they, bicyclists have to respect the public too, and in, in, in bicycling. Do you also have a commission? Commission Pally down there? No, nope. good. Thank you. All right. Anybody from the public? Your just a name and address for the record. Thank you. So uh, my name is Dave Rex. And I am a member of the Fairfield Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee. So I uh, certainly understand, and I think that our vision for this route aligns closely with your recommendation, which is a low-key bicycle route. The, the vision is not that we're going to have shadows every 50 feet and it's going to be lined and striped and that kind of stuff. I think it disturbs the vision of Greenfield Hill, and I think it's unnecessary. You know, this is not going to be as highly trafficked as our beach route as our Mill Plain or Lake to Beach routes that are pre-existing in the town. However, the Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee has been given a mandate to increase the visibility of cycling in our community and to make cycling safer. And we can't make the roads wider. These roads have been laid out hundreds, sometimes years ago. Uh, you know, yes, if we were in Southern California and we could just make the road wider, we would do it. We would put protected bike lanes in everywhere, it would be fantastic. It's utopia. We don't have that option here. So what we need to do is we need to work with the police department. We need to work on uh, enforcing the existing laws. You're 100% correct. But everyone is to blame. You can't just blame the cyclists. You have to blame motorists. You have to blame pedestrians. You have to, there are people all over in every aspect who are disobeying or breaking rules and breaking laws. And to unfairly single out or take a resource away from the bikes because of a perceived perception of illegality or scoff law, uh, I think, is, is 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 inappropriate. So, you know, again, I think we're in alignment. I think uh, low key, primarily signs on posts indicating direction, indicating turns, is what we're asking for, and I think it makes sense. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Public? Hearing none. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, commission. I'm going to make a motion that we accept the recommendation. Please support recommendation. I make a motion that we accept the uh, uh, Okay, we have a motion that we accept the police department's recommendation. Um, I second it. You want to read it again just for the recommendation? So the recommendation, streets not wide enough to designate bike route with edge lines. Confirm type of bike route once with decal signs and a few warning signs. Share the road, keep three feet apart, etc. And pavement markings narrows near key intersections or curves, or extensive markings in signage. Recommend low key bike route, 18 miles long, with occasional signs and markings to alert motorists of cyclists on roadway. Okay, we have a motion for that. Second. I second it. Second by Commissioner Ambrose. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Extensions left. Okay, so that. Recommendations approved. Okay, survey three. Oh, see you later, Mike. Right. Survey three of uh, 5151 Park Avenue, Sacred Heart Main Campus. Dormitory expansion, nature of request, traffic evaluation. Submission to OSTA, request for administrative decision 
approval on the ongoing expansion of the Sacred Heart main campus, specifically dormitory expansion, a recreation center, and office maintenance buildings, all fronting generally on Jefferson Street. The dormitory expansion will, mention, will maintain the two existing access drives to Jefferson Street, which previously served the Jewish nursing home. By whom? Michael E. Galanti, Hardesty and Hanover LLC. Recommendations. Main campus storms. Survey team seems okay with OSTA application. However, major concern for site distance pulling out of the Westerly driveway. New wall may pose issues. Engineer notified applicant traffic consultant to investigate improvements. Recommend tabling until safety matter is resolved. All right, Captain Colville, anything to add on this? Nothing really to add except for that wall with the safety concern. That wall is already existing. There. That was from another dorm, so I don't know what can be done about that wall that's already there. Um, I'm not sure if the new dorm was created uh, right uh, back in the front. That wall is already there, correct? Yes. Uh, so, okay. we had no problem with uh, the new dorm. Uh, okay. Mr. Stone. I was just going to add that uh, it would have been good if the university had consulted the police department before they built the wall. Because if they had just taken the gate and moved those pillars back three or four feet, that would have eliminated any line of sight fall. And now it's right up to the sidewalk, and you've got to go all the way out to, to get a good shot. So, but it's there, so and we spent a ton of money in that wall, so we're not going to do it. Now. <laughs> we're not going to take it down. No. Okay. All right. Anybody else in the commission? No. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. From the public, do we have anybody here from the public? No. Is there Attorney Alanti here? No. Oh, engineer. Oh, engineer. Sorry. Sorry about that. No, that's <laughs> no. Okay. So, do we have a motion to accept? I would read the recommendation. Yep. Yeah. The recommendation is referred to state for further investigation. SHU recently performed study at intersection and submitted info to the state this week. Oh, okay. so, this is, uh, recommendation, main campus storms. Survey team seems okay with OSTA application. However, major concern for site distance pulling out of the Westerly driveway. New wall may pose issues. Engineer notified applicant traffic consultants to investigate improvements. Recommend tabling until safety matter is resolved. I'll make a motion to see it. Okay. What's the motion? The motion is to table the item until the safety matter is resolved. All right. We have okay. So we got a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? No. Okay. So we're going to table that um, until they get the safety safety uh, report from the uh, yeah resolved. Okay. Survey number four location. 3135 Turnpike, Eastern Turnpike, Exit Driveway, Sacred Heart West Campus, Nature Request, add a left turn green arrow to the traffic control signal which will assist vehicles that are exiting the West Campus and turning left on Eastern Turnpike to do so safely. By whom, Ed Green, recommendations, refer to state for further investigation, SHU recently, per recently performed study at intersection and submitted info to the state this week. Anything else, Captain Cole? Uh, nothing for the acquisition of state light. And I recommend yep. referring to that. And we recommend the other traffic have a delayed green, right? And that, that was approved? Yeah. Okay. So now they want a green arrow going towards Easton? Yeah. Well, just some historical knowledge. Uh, this since Sacred Heart opened up the West Campus and uh, started classes up there, there has this has been an ongoing issue probably for the last year and a half to two years. Yeah. Um, some local representative asked, asked me to take a look at it, um, you know, kind of on the side and with the concern that once the ice skating rink goes in there, uh, there's going to be a bigger issue with egress of um, vehicles 
during large scale events. So I think they're preparing the infrastructure for a more volume. Probably nighttime volume also, right? I mean, the same, it seems like most, most track would be to go straight towards the parkway or make a right. And then how many vehicles are going to be going into the eastern yeah, parkway? Mm -hmm. Or whatever. What, what, what's happening, though, is that if, if vehicle number one is pulling out to make a left, it's blocking all the vehicles behind it from going. Okay. So if you had a left turn signal and a left turn lane, they would be able to turn in the straight lane to go just go straight. Okay. So right now there's no. Two lanes, is only one lane? Right. Oh, just, that makes it one lane, right? Yep, one lane. Okay. Right. I'll make a motion that we deny the request and refer to the state since it is their life and not, we don't have their jurisdiction over it. Okay. I second the motion. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Survey number what, five. Oh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> Survey number five, location. Brookside Drive and Pansy Road. The nature of request. There is a four-way stop at this intersection that is extremely problematic. Not sure if a light could be installed at intersection. Electric speed indicators placed intermittently along both Pansy Road and Brookside Drive. Place speed bumps along both roadways. By whom? Clay Risher. Recommendations. Preliminary site investigation doesn't warrant a traffic signal. $300. Uh, recommend three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> recommend reviewing crash data. Also recommend safety improvements. Install three new stop signs. Recommend red delineator posts for three main approaches. Could add pavement marking stop prior to stop bar. Captain Kobo, anything further? Uh, oh, I just uh, reiterate. Um, we're really definitely recommended updating the stop sign to the intersection and setters and markings. Um, and this is going to take a stop sign. Uh, travel like a pit at that intersection. Uh, what we will also do with the traffic in that area to start enforcing that stop signs. We do uh, radar and speed on uh, Danger Road, Brookside Drive, and also signs, draft signs there. Um, just to educate the public that Okay. Yeah, Commissioner Stone. I just add that Brookside is Pansy has become a really major cut through area to avoid the, the intersection of Black Rock Turnpike and Space Road. So they all come flying down there. And what we talked about was also in replacing the stop signs possibility of putting the larger stop sign up a couple of those points, as well as uh, increasing the enforcement. Okay. Anybody else from the commission? Lieutenant Arizari, you have select enforcement on your monthly report. What happened at Tansy and Brook? All right. I'll make a motion. Oh, wait. Wait. Oh. I don't have that right now. All right. Yes. And I know they've done a lot of uh, digital speed enforcement assignments there as far as traffic stuff. And, uh, okay. But you had you did check left enforcement on those two streets. Right. I'll make the motion that we install three new stop signs and provide the red delineator posts for the three main approaches. Oh, we didn't answer the public. Anybody from the public want to comment on that? Okay. Okay. I just wanted to thank you very much. Okay. Traveling show. I wanted you guys to, to be able to see this, so I'm not sure how to situate this. Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe just to show, show your concern, and uh, if we have a problem, we can get back to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, do I need to address you guys? Is this, uh, this is actually good. I understand the light thing. Um, <laughs> you can just state your name and yeah. your address. Uh, Clay Risher. Kevin, how are you? Good evening. Uh, and uh, I'm at 213 Brookside Drive, right on the corner of Pansy and, uh, yeah. Yeah. and uh, Brookside. So. Yeah. so they're going through the stop signs? Running through them every yeah. day. 
Everyone Can you uh, show that to Lieutenant there? Sure. Yeah, show us the. Because he's going to enforce it. <laughs> this, is, this is one morning. Before the lieutenant's work. back there, then. Right. Just show him what's going on. And uh, we lost our dog up there. Um, I heard him. Sorry to hear that. Helping out. Happy to help out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you had a motion to... All right, I'll make the motion that we install three new stop signs and provide the direct delineator post for the new main approach. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Motion carries. A survey six location. 111 Melville Avenue at driveway. Nature of request. Requesting no parking sign be placed before both before both before and after my driveway at 111 Melville Avenue on my side of the street restricting parking when there are special events at Tunxis Hill Park such as recent weekend baseball games cars park along Melville Avenue on both sides of my driveway rendering it impossible for me to look up or down the street to check for oncoming traffic traffic I cannot safely exit my driveway without calling the police for assistance or asking passing pedestrians to stand in the middle of the street and block traffic. An unsafe practice. By whom? Marjorie Morris. Recommendations. No parking between signs for downhill curve to 20 feet minimum past driveway. May have to confirm exact location. Okay. Mission anybody? No. Captain Koval, have to anything? No. Off. Is anybody from the public here? Is Marjorie here? Yes. Thank you very much. I'll make a motion <laughs> to accept the recommendation. I'll second, second it. Okay. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 You got your sign. <laughs> Survey number seven. Oh, location. Oh, so how long have you been living there, man? Thirty years. Thirty years. There you go. <laughs> I'm glad you got your stops. I mean, yes. parking. Yes. Okay, go sorry, go ahead. Survey number seven location 130 Melville Avenue between 2nd Street. Nature of request request no parking on the northbound and southbound sides of Melville Avenue and on the northern side of 3rd Street. See attached photos. By whom? Dr. Max Albanese. Recommendations. No parking between signs 20 feet from 130 driveway to where curve ends. May have to confirm exact location. Okay, nothing really to add, Captain? Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the recommendation. Second. Second. Mr. Stone, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Okay, motion passes. Survey 8 location, New England Avenue at Meadow Street. Nature of request. Request to install no parking here to corner, at least 80 feet from the intersection. By whom? Jeremy Blum. Recommendations. Engineering or zoning to notify nursery not to possess store materials on sidewalks. Going southbound slash westbound, no parking here to corner, approximately 50 feet from Meadow Street intersection. Also, for southbound westbound approach, install W2-1 intersection signs just prior to underpass. Okay, Captain, anything on this? The only thing we really changed was the distance from 80 feet to 40 feet, which made uh, more sense in the starting location. Mm -hmm. Did you reach out to GANs at all? Um, I'm not sure if we did or if we were always going to have um, zoning. Engineering, they reach out to zoning to notify them. They had a pallet and crate on crates all over the sidewalk in the intersection, which means they're going to see. Okay. They moved that stuff up. We gave the problems of the initial plan to cycle the intersection. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else from the commission? Anybody from the public here? Nope. I'll make a motion that we approve the recommendation. Second. Uh, Commissioner Caffarelli seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Old business. 
None. New business. To consider a request by Carlo Mikolos, Executive Director Operation Hope, and Rob Greenbaum for panhandling is unsafe signs to be posted in select areas of fair play. So um, I can I can speak to this yeah. a little bit if the sure. commission wants. Um, I would, you know, we've been looking for some uh, remedy to curb the panhandling at the exit ramp. Um, I know some commissioners have asked me about it. I get a lot of phone calls from uh, community members. Um, Carla Miklos is the director of Operation Hope. Her and I have had many discussions because many of the people that are there are her clients. And um, she came across this sign in Stanford by one of her constituents and she offered it out to me. Like, I'll pay for the sign and put it up because she has an objection to her clients going and panhandling. Um, and I just really just wanted to see what, if the commission had an appetite for uh, this type of sign and then, you know, what kind of latitude they would give us to use it. Um, she did offer that if we wanted to put her, her um, plug her company, OperationHope.com or wherever at the bottom, make donations to Operation Hope, which I don't have an objection to at all. We, we could put Fairfield Police, make donations to Fairfield Police. <laughs> <laughs> um, in scholarship. That's right. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but I, I think it's really about um, providing resources and maybe giving a sense of awareness to the public that um, panhandling is discouraged by our uh, other people in this town and um, and that there are other resources out there if they seek to want to go in. Uh, Chief, I see an awful lot of this at the bottom of uh, Black Rock Turnpike exit as you come into oh. King's Highway. I mean, and I see it there. I see it, uh, those heading down Black Rock Turnpike, uh, when they, right before the, the uh, they go onto the turnpike, I mean, every day. And, and um, you know, it's dangerous, too, because I've, oftentimes they'll walk out and stop traffic, and that's a very busy in intersection. So I think something should be done, not only for, for many reasons, uh, maybe for the safety also of the panhandlers, but just for traffic reasons. And it's not the not the nicest thing to have, you know, panhandling on so many intersections in that area. I know there's other areas in Fairfield where it happens, but there's a great concentration in that area. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I would say I deal with panhandlers all the time. They, uh, the one that we have, we had a professional panhandler who sued the town of Stratford for violating their panhandling rights. So, I mean, on commercial properties, you need to post a sign that says uh, no uh, soliciting, no panhandling, violators will be prosecuted and they can be prosecuted. They're going into traffic and they're obstructing traffic. They should be given the ticket for hazardous use for a by pedestrian. I think if you put panhandling unsafe signs up and they're panhandling under them, all that's going to do is generate numerous calls to the communication center saying somebody's panhandling and there's a sign that says that they shouldn't. <coughs> and I think that's just going to be, uh, I think if we post a sign, it should be something that's enforced, uh, not, yeah. not just the suggested behavior. You know, we can put signs up that say drive these nice. You know, it's like, well, yeah. Well, well, most of the most of the areas that panhandling occurs is on state property. Well, yeah. it doesn't really have our we don't have jurisdiction anyway. I well, mean, 95 Black Rock Turnpike. Well, they used to like where I was in the right They country. do it leaving the shopping yeah, and, 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 and now it's all been posted. Yeah. yeah. Pushing yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jamie touched on it just a little bit. Uh, and I don't know how these things tie together, if at all, but there's been an increase of folks up on the Black Rock Turnpike, whether they're in the ShopRite Plaza or in Trader Joe's, the ones playing the music with the signs. So is that is that still considered panhandling, or is that considered something else? Does it matter that they're in the Trader Joe's parking lot or in the ShopRite parking lot versus under the... Uh, the highway, or I, I just don't understand. So on, on private property, which would be Trader Joe's or Shoprite or any any shop mall, shopping mall in right. the town, it would be it would be up to the business owner okay. to to ask them to leave. And if they don't leave, then they could be charged with trespassing. Okay. Um, if they had signs up like uh, Commissioner Millington uh, illustrated, then then we would have 
clause to just go and enforce it. Charge that and enforce it on, on the fall. Okay. Um, on the regular property, they do, on, on state property or town okay. property, they, they do have rights and they can stand there and and panhandle or hold up a sign. Um, you know, I think this sign, and, and I don't know how I feel about it. I, I'm not a proponent of sign sure. litter because sometimes we put signs up where it's not they're not necessary. But I think the purpose of this sign is to more more to inform the, the drivers. Like there might be a panhandler standing next to them, but it's telling the drivers don't support the panhandler. Go to this website and donate if you feel an obligation to donate. Um, whether it works or not, I don't know. Yeah. I don't maybe, think maybe they're gonna. Yeah, you know, they don't read the stop signs. No one a small thing on the bottom of a panhandling sign. You know, Call so. Jamie Millington. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, what's the anybody else in commission? Well, so maybe maybe if you just want to give a sense of the board, and then you know. Well, I agree with Jamie that I don't see what you can't enforce it. I mean, uh, not a not a, a public property. And the other right. problem is, is that as the panhandlers would move, then we're going to get requests for these signs all over town, wherever these people go. So I mean, there'll be panhandling signs like all over. The place. But most of them are on state property. So that's that's where they where they, you come off the exit. I mean, whether it's in Milford or Fairfield, um, that's where they are. So it's not our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. really. All right, so what's the consensus here? Deny? Yeah. Deny? I don't know. Well, I, I wouldn't mind just giving it some more thought. I don't know yeah. the answer. Yeah. I, I just don't know enough to know. Is it, oh, we got could you send the link to the let, could you send the link if, if you haven't for the uh, the ordinance or the law that governs what they can and can't do just as a data point? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you I can or Thanks. Um, and, and maybe, so this is in right. Stanford. Maybe I could reach out to the chief of Stanford and see what type of, um, you know, if it, if it helps me. All right. Well, the consensus is, at this point, a no-go, but we won't. We'll just stay with them now. I think it's worthwhile looking into that. Yeah, I will. I yeah. Will. Either way. But yeah. I mean, just, all right. So let's... Uh, oh, yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Do you know, are these people really poor, um, yep. hard of operational? Or this part of the little ring. <laughs> little ring. Well, I oh. see them in the cell door dressed pretty nice. No. So I don't know. Are, yeah. are they just people looking for money, or you know, I don't, I don't want to paint them no, no, with no. a broad brush because right. I think there's some that are needy right. and I think there's some that have mental health right. challenges exactly. and I think there's right. some that are, like you said, they're they're dressed pretty well. They have nice backpacks. Chairs that sometimes sit on. I just don't want to paint you with a broad brush. I think that's a question. I've seen some of them get picked up in the nightfall, you know. I don't know if they're part of the group of people, and I'm just asking the question. You know? Are like being a part of the group? You know, trying to make money. Yeah. I don't know. Deep down and out, certainly want to help them. I'm not sure. I'm unclear on that. It's a wonderful cycle problem. Waiting for stores. We want them. The managers would never want to force them to rest. We want to rest somebody who they think may be down there. Yeah. So we yeah. feel we've worn and worn. Right. We're, kind of, and we're stuck in that cycle. There's yeah. no cutback no panhandling, no soliciting. They do it. The manager calls. I want them off. Or the whole plaza. Right. They move from Trader Joe's to Panera Bread. Right. Yeah. And they're playing the And we want them to move out there. They go across the street to play the shop. Yeah. 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 You can't do anything about that. All right, so we uh, need a motion to table it. That's what the consensus is. Table it? Okay. We have a motion to table. Second is Dr. Caffarelli. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. All right. Yeah. I don't think anybody's asking the time. The agendas were out, and it was so far as what Father Cipriano, we want to have you step into chaplain. Senator Barrett said a letter. You have to make a motion to add, add to the agenda. Oh, okay. Right. All right. Motion to add to the agenda. What is it? The motion, motion is to uh, appoint a chaplain to the Fairfield Police Department. Second? Anybody second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Was it, was it the motion was made? Well, we're just okay. going to see what story we're doing. Just to, on the agenda. Not to, not so to, we're not voting on it. We're just voting to add it added to the agenda. We're voting to add to the agenda. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so since Father Allen's retirement from Fairfield University, he was our official Catholic chaplain, chaplain for the department. Okay. Um, since his retirement, we haven't had an official chaplain appointed so by the commission. Um, so as you guys have noticed, um, Father Cipriani from Assumption School has kind of taken our interim chaplain, um, but unofficial because it hasn't been sworn in by the commission. Um, so I've reached out to um, Bishop, Bishop Caggiano to get his blessing to, uh, to at least allow Father Cipriani, who is very willing to do so. Uh, if, if you don't mind, I'd read a letter from the bishop. Um, dear Father Cipriani, having received a request from the Fairfield Police Department for you to serve as Catholic chaplain and aware of your willingness to serve the town of Fairfield in this capacity, I am happy to appoint you in this, to this position effective immediately. This appointment will be held for a term of three years and can be renewed in the future. I'm very grateful for your willingness to provide much needed spiritual and pastoral care for the men and women of the Fairfield Police Department who serve so diligently to protect the community from harm. I am confident that you will serve with them with great joy and fidelity wishing you every blessing as you undertake this ministry and assuring you of my prayers and support, I am. Sincerely yours in Christ, Most Reverend Frank Caggiano Bishop. So, how many chapters do we have? Just one? Oh, one. Here's affiliation. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the one that we set up as our uh, chaplain of all our promotional ceremonies and time for critical incidents. So, he's, he's, he's paid his dues without even having the official <laughs> blessing. Yeah, I've seen some of the yeah. Do we need to hold this over? Or can, has, I mean, has, uh, who's going to vote against the bishop? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I think in the past the commission has um, appointed him, and if, if you so desire him, for him to be appointed, we would swear him in on Friday at the promotional ceremony. Um, and he's prepared to do so and be there as, as possible. Friday. Oh, yeah, there's a motion. Yeah. Actually, I think this is perfect for yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great guy. He's volunteering. Great guy. Anyway. Yeah. 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 All right, motion to accept uh, Father Cipriano as the official, the official uh, chaplain of Fairfield Police Department. Okay. Do we have a second? I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> no, that on the record. On the record. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Well, Is he here? Is he here? For the term of the three years, basically agreeing with what the letter yeah. said. For a right? three year term. Oh, yeah. that you will be in, right? Yes. Term. Term. Yeah. He's not here? <laughs> yeah. He's not here. He's going to be there, right? I'm always here. <laughs> okay, where are we at? Oh, monthly report. Monthly report. Um, okay. Oh, by the way, who's Stormy Ryan? That's our new A animal control person? Yes. Stormy is the first thing? Yes. And where is she from? Just I believe she lives in Stratford, Michigan. Okay. She's a part-time employee of the department. In fact, we just hired a second part-time to advance our firm. Oh, really? You got two. Uh, okay. And they have experience in animals and all that? Yeah. They have pretty good experience in animals. Uh, nothing with the animal control in the physical capacity. Uh, but they have volunteers for a very special. Okay. And, uh... Okay. And you're, uh, I know you have selective enforcement, Villa, Pansy, Brookside Drive, right? And you, Villa, you had 13 infractions, and Pansy and Brookside, you don't have that data, right? Okay. In the future, um, especially when we have the public, you know, inquiring about certain areas like Pansy, it would be great. You know, this is not criticism, just if you have those stats available, it would help a lot with the first one. When uh, we told the lady from Villa that we had 13 tickets out, she liked that. <laughs> In the future. Um, and your parking tickets are up, $20,000 for the town, $20,000 plus, that's great. And uh, you gave out 56 stop sign infractions. Nice. Super. That was, that's my little thing. Anybody else have anything about the monthly report? Commissioner yeah. Stone? I'll just add that as of uh, July 15th, we'll have two additional officers going back in for staffing as. Um, Come back to a, a better level, and we'll have two additional officers that will be assigned to the uh, uh, safety unit. So you should see an increase in, uh, in traffic enforcement in the, in the uh, service. 
Are you moving forward with any of the people from the list that we put together last time? Yeah, that would be a pretty long conversation, but uh, we are we are doing very well. Yeah, we we have a couple of that uh, things came up in the background. We have others that um, are just, um, looks like by the 22nd, I think we'll have five that will be swearing. Next Friday. Super. Okay, so Friday is the promotion in Father Cipriano, and that's at three o'clock at the library. Three o'clock at the library. Does that have air conditioning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't have anything else. Anybody, anything else from the board? Is there any updates on what's going on in town? Or? Um, you know, we had a pretty serious, you know, the homicide the other day. Um, detectives are working that. Um, we have a lot of good information. We've done a lot of interviews. Um, the detectives have been working around the clock. Um, on the record, I prefer not putting any specifics out there, right. but um, I will uh, send an email to all of you uh, illustrating an update on the little guy. I did hear some feedback from the Bureau saying that um, oh, yeah. it's been kind of hot for a week and a half trying to work on a homicide case. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm getting the same feedback. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were getting on me today. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Walker, we, uh, oh, yeah, I'm we sure most of you yep. saw that news. Yep. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, there was some work behind the scenes from the tenant, uh, from the landlord who had another tenant that was interested in the property. Um, so it was kind of like a, a, a good approach. I think she was looking, the old owner was looking to get out of her lease. The new tenant was looking to move in. And uh, the landlord was willing to... Uh, Clean the place up, I think. Another Chinese restaurant, or you don't know? I don't know. Okay. Don't know. Chase, I drove by St. Pius last night, the parking lot, and it was full of trucks, and it was just jammed. Is there something going on, a movie being taken yeah. at the church, or? Bradley Cooper, I think. I, I don't think it's on the, uh, I don't think it's at the church. No. no. I guess it, it was jammed. Yeah. 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 Okay. They were using, say, high as a staging area. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, and the other thing was on social media. Um, Black Rock Turnpike, they had the uh, Muslim holiday. They had a bunch of complaints. Did you hear about that? They had a Muslim holiday. Oh, uh, yeah. And they were uh, people walking around. Yeah, so they, they get something to do with slaughtering animals and giving them to the poor. Uh, religious holiday. Every year they have it, but I it's, guess it's a uh, it's a sacrificial religious ceremony. Yeah, it's no, it starts it's, on their high holiday, yeah. and every year we get it, and they call me and make sure that it's yeah. okay that they park on Black Rock Turn like yeah. There's never an issue other than sometimes the sheep get. So yeah. the only complaint I got was that um yeah I guess the cow got out with that um that walking around Black Rock Turnpike and there's people driving down with kids in the car and there's people with blood on them and parts of animals. So maybe if you could just reach out and just say, you know, when you're on Black Rock Turnpike, maybe not parading around with the carcasses might be okay. Not not that bothers me. No, no, I but you yeah, have kids that are like four or five years old they won't <laughs> you know, that's not good. So maybe just pass it on as a I will. point of information. Other than that, anybody else anything else? Yeah. We have a motion to adjourn it. I move. So I move. Okay, motion by Commissioner Stone, seconded by Thank you. Commissioner Ambrose, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, opposed? Aye.